interesting thing about the IndyCar series is uh, we race on street courses and then we race on permanent road courses which are much smoother and generally much faster sweeping corners and then we race on ovals there's high banking low banking small tracks big tracks the speed difference is huge like uh, you know at Indy will be going 245 miles an hour down the straight whereas right now we're at Phoenix and at Phoenix we'll be going 190 down the straight so it's a dramatic speed difference that we have to work through every week. The engineer driver relationship is by far the most important thing in, in motorsports. My main duty is basically just trying to optimize the performance of the car. There's a lot of parameters on the car that we can adjust. We have a data logger and we log all of the loads for every corner, the damper positions, steering, throttle, brake, and then we have accelerometers for lateral, longitudinal, vertical. And then through those, we do lots of math calculations to come up with lots of other parameters. But since there's a human involved, and there's a feel that the human has. Alex will come in from a given run and give me his thoughts there's many cases where the car is saying A, but me, I'm feeling B. You have to come up with the change that'll fix that problem and give him the feel he wants. Then you have to kind of find the line between what is right and what is wrong. <laughs> it's everything. It's just making the car comfortable. It's the most important aspect. Cars custom built to you in terms of the, the cockpit, um, the seats fully molded to you, and it's designed to be as comfortable as possible. And it's actually so comfortable that in pit, if you're in pit lane for a while, you can actually doze off and fall asleep a bit. If the driver is comfortable, he can get the most out of it. Like it might not be the ultimate fastest car, but if he can do multiple rounds, he can qualify much better. Whereas if the car is just a little bit quicker and he misses one corner, we're, we're not, we're out. Say Jeremy comes on the radio and he's like, hey man, we're losing two tenths in, in, in this section of the track. I can then be like, okay, what am I doing there? Maybe I can, you know, brake a bit later, get off the brake sooner, carry more speed, and then you try it the next lap. He has more adjustments inside the car than I have in pit lane. There's a lot of decision making that goes into it while you're still, you know, actively performing and driving the race car. Inside the car, he can adjust his anti-roll bars, which adjust the balance of the car of how stiff the front is against roll or how stiff the rear is against roll. He can adjust those. He's got brake bias. The steering wheel weighs close to 45 pounds of, of torque you have to put into it, which is basically holding a 45-pound plate out in front of you and, and turning and fighting with that. So the higher the number is, the more understeer, meaning the less the car wants to actually turn. And so you can see just in, in these red zones is where a corner segment is. And you can see that just trying to get the balance to, to get all of these lines to be the same in every corner is one of the problems. So at this corner, the car is really balanced. It's really neutral. But in this corner, it has lots of understeer. And so the car is always a compromise. And you're trying to, to bring the balance of all those corners together. A lap is 18 seconds. And the average speed is 185 miles an hour. And the trust that you need to have between the driver and engineer and the relationship that you form is, is very critical in making the right decision.